Recording. Recording. Yes, it's recording. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I'll be sharing a little bit about some simple, I hope very simple, easy to understand five Ruby tips. Five-ish. Um, I think it should be five-ish. Uh, first is a simple one. If you are creating a new hash, uh, you can pass. You can set the default value to be returned by any any of the uh, items inside. If it's not set, you actually return this default value, right? So, uh, so you, when you're instantiating it, or when you just uh, a dot default equals to a string or an object or whatever, if the attribute is not set, or if the, or if the key is not set, you will actually return that value. So, um, this is something I learned quite recently. So, like for example, uh, life, real life coding, yay. Uh, I think Right, got it? Alright, so new. Uh, and I'll pass in a little string that says these are not the droids you are looking for. Uh, right, so if I do this, the hash is still empty. Uh, if I try to get something like say, hello, you basically, these are not the droids you're looking for. But if I set it, if I do set it, like over here, I set it to right. Um, so if I ask this again, it returns R2. Uh, if I do something else like look, yeah, you say this is not the droids you're looking for. So it's pretty cool. You can you can also change it dynamically. It's like a default. You can change this to right. So if I do, yeah. So it kind of makes sense, I hope, yeah. So this is pretty cool if, uh, if you're creating a new hash and you're not sure what to set inside or you want to, like you're creating an API, uh, for example, for mobile phones. I think a lot of, in the past I've written uh, backend APIs for phones and, and if the phone receives a null exception, you crash. So uh, if you wanted to return a string by default, whenever you call for something, this is kind of cool. So this is something interesting. I should get a chair or, Something getting up against the chair. Or... Yeah. Right. How does it work with numbers? So if like you took the fold to one and plus things? Uh, yeah, you can also pass in a proc. You can pass in a, a sort of proc and it will basically do that stuff for you, which, which is kind of cool. Something I learned recently. Um, so that's one. Second thing I want to show you is uh, root state machines in uh, Ruby. So this, uh, there's one thing called AESM, act as state machine. So like for example, you have a column in your database, it's called status. So if it's like, or active for example, you have a, a blog post you're publishing, active or inactive. So that's a Boolean state, right? But when it becomes a bit more complicated, like say you need to have like a, uh, a, a approval process, then you need to go into uh, pending publishing, pending approval, and then you go like, uh, approve, then publish, and then it can cancel or whatever. So it gets really complicated. So we we'll use a, a, a gem like ASM. Um, right, you can basically declare in your code um, the different states that are that would that are valid, right? Different states that, that in state and state transitions that will be required. For example, in this uh, example, uh, the state is sleeping running and cleaning, right? Inici uh, in the, the initial state will be sleeping and if you do a dot run, like you create this object with dot run on it uh, you basically tr uh, trigger an event which will transit from sleeping to running from something like that uh, but, you, you, but, but it's restricted to this, so if you try to do it from running to you want to switch it, if it's in a running state, you can't run again you will throw an exception because it will not allow you to move into that state which is pretty cool. Uh, I think in the past we have written uh, quite a fair bit of boilerplate <laughs> code to try and simulate this kind of uh, state transition. So if you're reading, re writing something that requires complex um, uh, states that you can go through, this is a very cool gem, good gem to try. Uh, if you don't like, you do, you want it to return, uh, if you want it to return a, a false by default, you can do that too. Uh, I just I can show you a code that we wrote. Uh, this is the one. Yes, it is. Right. Um, Right, this is some code that we have internally. Is it okay? Can you see it? 
Right, so it also works with uh, Rails enums. So we have enums like this. Um, if your enums like this approve, pending approval, uh, uh, approval pending, pending, and so on and so forth, it actually works with that as well. So we have, uh, so this is how it roughly looks like. Right, and then you have states that you can, there are even callbacks like say before something happened, you trigger something. Like in this case, when it goes to approve, after it successfully persists the state, you will send out an email. So you can write uh, events that are triggered <laughs> along with this, with this uh, change in the state. Um, very good. And uh, you, uh, by default, AASM will throw an exception if you try to move to the wrong state. But if you're writing, you're writing some legacy code which you cannot throw an exception, you want to throw a false instead, you can do that by turning off turning off by uh, passing in whiny transitions equals false. So it's less whiny. <laughs> right, so this is uh, yeah, something nice. Um, that's my second tip. You can check it out at, the Git, at github. Uh, github.com slash ASM. So it's a, it's a Ruby gem. So you can just install, include it as part of your Rails applications or something. Uh, documentation is pretty, pretty awesome here as well. Um, so that's the second tip. Third tip is for guys who are writing uh, capybara uh, uh, tests, uh, you know how frustrating it is when your object, when your page change, like the style, uh, an ID change, and you got to go in and find the piece of code that points to that button that clicks it, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, so you got to, for example, you have a really huge test suite, you're going and, and change like 50 files where they are pointing to uh, 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 ID login. When they, they have changed a login link, you go, like, go look for all 50,000 and change it. It's crazy, right? So, uh, Cyprism uh, helps by turning your page into a page object. Um, so, it looks something like, uh, let me try and find it. So, here's an example of a capybara, of a capybara test, right? Um, in our spec. So, I'm looking, I'm logging into a page, and instead of, uh, so basically, when I log into this page, I would Instantiate a new object. And this object will basically have uh, an action called load, which will load the URL. So the, the, the page looks something like this. Index. Right. So the index page looks something like this. We have the URL defined. And you have elements that you, that you can define it as well, like say a login link. So when the DOM changes, like your designer go in and in committed, commits a new style, <laughs> Or like he likes to add some fan, fan, fancy CSS to it and uh, adds a couple of uh, links or whatever. You can actually go in uh, and say, "Ha, huh, it's okay. I'll just open my uh, site prism page and I'll just change uh, the link from login to say um, login link." Right? Ah, fixes the problem. So all your tests will start passing again. Something along those lines, right? So it's one place where you identify elements that you that are clickable. Uh, it's still you you will still have access to the the full capybara object. So you can still do all the actions they can do with a carry bar object, which is kind of cool. Um, you can even define methods here as well. Like say you want to do something on the page. Like you see the Ajax page, you have there's some several functions that you do. You can encapsulate it into one site, into one method inside the page object. So when you say uh, page.login now, means you would click on, uh, re remember and log, it, log me in now, for example, as a, as a, as a method name. You actually encapsulate a few few actions like such as uh, click on remember me, key in the name, and key in and so on. So you can encapsulate all this into one method. So your Kabibara scripts uh, will basically be a very short, uh, very short in the sense you just be one line of code that says please log me in, something like that, right? So you can encapsulate functions into one method, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So guys who are writing Kabibara. Uh, I've, I've written some tests uh, in the past which improves an existing Kabibara test by how many hundred percent was it? Well, one third improves the performance by one third because, it, for example, in when you write a Kabibara test, usually you have to look for the, the element and do something to it. So with with site Prism, it actually uh, pre uh, pre scans the page for the elements that you're looking for. So you don't have to keep scanning the page over and again looking for the same for the elements that you need, right? So, which is pretty good. Um, you can check it out, site prism. Yeah, like it's again the documentation is super awesome. Um, have I lost anyone yet? 
Sure. There, this one comes with a very nice uh, weight DSL, like say weight for. So weight for menu, for example. So home the weight for menu. You actually so there's a weight for. Uh, so wait, uh, wait for prefix will basically help, uh, uh, help wait for the element to appear on the page first before it proceeds to the next thing. So there is wait for uh, functionality here is pretty good. Uh, uh, you can. I think there is. I think it follows the Capybara default wait time. Uh, what is doing here is actually a loop. Yeah, it's basically doing a loop internally. Yeah, they remove wait for. Yeah, wait, wait for Right. Alright, so this is actually a loop. So it's just checking what is it there, check again, right. check again, check again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps doing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can think if you, you don't like it can can change the can change the behavior. La. Like you can you Google online and find there's a eventually method somewhere you can you can try and throw in. Yeah, but yeah, there is an eventual gem for like you go yeah. on a page and like search will significantly increase your CPU. Right. Uh, next thing I want to share a little bit is about the Vim config that we use at Neil. Um, <laughs> so uh, in Neil we use Tmux for uh, uh, for 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 our uh, daily work. Uh, so it's a basically Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. You can open up. You think of it a type browsing for 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 the terminal, and we use Vim quite aggress uh, quite quite aggressively. Uh, when you're using Vim and Tvux, uh, one of the cool things is that you can create panels. Uh, let me just show you. For example, over here in this particular test, I can I have a couple of panels open in the, in the, in the background. So, right, so what you see here is my... What you can see here is I have tabs. Um, first tab, second tab, third tab. Um, and I have panels, like on the left is the Vim window. And then I have another terminal window here and terminal window here. The benefit of this is you can you know, uh, look at your code and maybe run your test at the same time. Uh, and something that we have done uh, internally is we have bound, we, have, we installed a couple of things. Uh, one is called Vmux. Vmux it helps you trigger, uh, trigger commands we run on different parts of uh, different panels. Like for example, in this case, I can look for one of my tests. For example, this is the, the leaf object. Uh, colon A gives me the colon, colon capital A gives me the, the test. And then if I just want to run this particular test, I can do leader RN. What is this? Oh, okay. Hang on. What's going on here? No. Huh? What? Okay. <laughs> Oops. Open this. <laughs> It's supposed to work, it works! Then I find. Sorry about that. That was a negative demonstration, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, so if I do leader RN, you will basically trigger a command on the top right panel. And you basically what it's doing is running my tests. Um, yeah. Uh, you will see really quickly there was actually a Nian cat going on there. Yeah. So if I can run, I can run all the tests in this file by leader RF, which will run all the tests in this file. <laughs> I think it's called a Nyan Cat formatter, you can, you can download it, it's kind of nice. You know, it beats watching dots fly by the screen, right? So, and if a Nyan Cat... Uh, yeah, it's, it's really ugly on the CI, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this, kind of, so we, we, this is achieved with a combination of a few things. Uh, first is with uh, Vim RSpec, which, which lets you uh, define some... Uh, uh, Vim RSpec lets you uh, bind a key keystroke to run an RSpec test, and of course, I'm using Vmax, which which lets which I can define the the, the command to call. Um, if you're interested, I can try to post this somewhere, and you guys can have a look at it. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's our Vim setup. And if you're interested in how uh, our, and in the new Vim setup, you can go to 
uh, Neo and Vim config as a whole bunch of uh, very cool <coughs> shortcuts and stuff that we do we, we have internally. Yeah, we, there's a branch just for Singapore. <laughs> just saying. Okay, uh, I think that's four tips. The last Ruby tip is a little software out there is called Mount Bank. Mount Bank lets you do like over the wire testing. So for example, if you're running uh, you're, you're running an application and it does it requires you to connect to say a payment gateway uh, or and you or a for example Facebook API so you can what you can do is you can define uh, you can start up a, a server and basically use a red uh, basically Mount Bank is basically a Node.js uh, server that can that you can uh, dynamically tell it what to listen for and which port it looks for and returns the, the appropriate response that you that you need. Uh, and the cool stuff is I, I wrote a, a gem for this. <laughs> so this is uh, Mount Bank, and I, I wrote a gem which is actually uh, it's called Mount Bank, uh, un uncreatively it's called Mount Bank, um, which gives you uh, so traditionally to, to talk to to, to to tell this server to listen to certain ports or listen to certain URLs and or, and give some canned response. Uh, you need to uh, use a curl. You need to curl to the machine and basically change the change it uh, dynamically. Uh, you can of course also load a JSON file, which it will also recognize and use that at run at start time, right? But in runtime, you can actually dynamically tell it to, to listen to certain URLs, return certain responses as you as and when you need it. And uh, the Mount Bank gem lets you interact with that uh, Mount Bank server uh, in Ruby, so you can write. Uh, code internally. So, so for example, what you could do is uh, you could be writing. Um, say you're interacting with a payment gateway, and you want to make make it in runtime. You want it to uh, the next request that I'm making to this payment gateway goes to a certain URL, and the URL should return a certain a certain payload, maybe an XML file or a JSON file, which is pretty much what you are expecting from the uh, from the actual production. Uh, Gateway uh, server, right? So you can mock that. You can mock that by by create and starting this up, uh, Mount Bank, and tell it, telling it what to what to return, um, which is kind of nice. So uh, let's see where I can. I hope this demonstration works. <laughs> so to start it up, you basically start. Uh, it's a command line uh, tool. You can just type mb. So MB dash dash allow injection. So basically, allow injection lets you, uh, yeah. So basically, it, it listens to port twenty five twenty five by default. So you can uh, you can go to it. I think. I hope. Right. So twenty five twenty five. You can see a lot of. So basically, the, how it works is, um, yeah. This is a, di a very nice diagram. I'll show how it works. Uh. <laughs> right. So. Magic, yeah. magic. So it creates. Uh, so it has a concept of imposter. You tell it, I want this imposter to listen to certain responses and give a certain uh, re reply, right? Uh, certain requests and give a certain reply. So um, I have this test right now. I hope this runs also. Right. So basically, what I've done is uh, I've actually tried to open up. I create in code. I've actually say I want you to test this URL. Local host forty five forty five. I hope it works. Local host port forty five forty five. It's not giving me a response right now. So what I can do next is I'll run this next test, which is you find this when you check out the the, the, the code. It basically triggers and tell Mount Bank to now listen to port forty five forty five for a response. So previously it was. It's, it is giving me a response. It's giving me a two hundred, right? So, so I can now go to the next next step and say I want you right now. So next next step is I want to tell it please listen to response from port forty five forty five and return a uh, JSON payload, right? This will be the response I'm looking for. I want you to now do this. Um, I'll try to run this test. So what it has done is, it's now returning me uh, a specific uh, response. 
So imagine you're writing a test and you want a, you can basically, in, instead of pointing to the production URL, you can in your configuration, as part of your test configura environment configuration, say, I want you to point to localhost colon 4545 or any other arbitrary port that you want to listen to. Right, and then you, you, you tell Mount Bank, please listen to this URL, and so and then give a response of a certain a can response, right? So you can do that. Uh, of course, you can also do this with VCR and with many other frameworks out there. But if you really want something which you can have a lot of control over, um, and maybe it's, there's some parts of the code that you cannot control it going out, right? For example, you're in. A, your code is, you don't want the code, for example, you cannot write the, the mocks, you can actually make it actually call a server <coughs> uh, and make it give a certain response. Um, so my next, the next example, basically, instead of, so it listens to a path as well, I can tell you, please look at this path, slash test, and then give the response only in this path, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, right. So this one now doesn't give me a response, if I go to slash test, gives me the new, the new response that I need, right? Um, super helpful. Uh, I launched this gem, so just, I wrote this gem over the holidays. Um, oops, um, I think it's been, there's about 200 downloads now, so yeah, um, go check it out. And uh, when can we expect 1.0? <laughs> <laughs> Not Google. Use it first. <laughs> Give me some feedback. <laughs> is it complete? Uh, unfortunately, is it complete? There's also there are some other functionalities you can do. You can tell. You can actually in. You can tell. You can pass in a JavaScript snippet, a JavaScript snippet as a response, and you will basically Mount Bank will know that. Uh, will look for certain re requests, in your uh, form post. For example, your form post going there. You take the form post and do, do some manipulation. Like I say, do MD five hash or return it as part of the response payload. You can actually pass in JavaScript into that and you know what to do, um, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, so that's all that I have. The five Ruby tips um, are defaults in a hash.new, uh, ASM, Ruby, the Ruby state machine, uh, site prism for writing page objects, uh, a pretty awesome Tmux, Vim, Vmux, and Vim RSpec combo. Quite a mouthful and mouth bang, right? So these are my five rookie tips. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, like the next one, I'm gonna try it when I get home. Uh, I just want to point out, like, got bitten a few times. I just want to point out if you use hash dot new and pass in something like an empty array, it is not the empty array for each key. It is the same exact array. So if you're thinking of doing something like um, maybe like hash response pass mutate in place and you make a new key and mutate in place you'll mutate that same array twice so I'll post the stack overflow link on the meetup group later but yeah I got beaten a few times so most of the time you want to use the block syntax right yes um, you can check out the documentation um, here it's pretty cool you can also I think there's a dot default yeah default yeah. proc and you can pass in a proc as well